Now, back in the 1970s, the feminists who took to the streets to campaign for things like equal pay were famously labelled bra burners. But is now the time for men to start setting fire to their pants? Their pants. <laughs> the image might sound faintly ridiculous, but one man strongly believes that the rights of his fellow men have been so assaulted that it is time to fight back. So much so, in fact, that Mike Buchanan, who used to work for the Conservatives, has set up a new political party called Justice for Men and Boys. He wants to take on what he sees as the innumerable injustices that the modern bloke faces. Mike claims that whilst men pay something like 72% of all income tax, there's not one single area of public policy or spending that favours them. He says the education system favours girls who get better grades than boys, that the NHS spends more money fighting breast cancer than prostate cancer, that women get their pensions earlier even though they live longer, and they take up 65% of public sector jobs. So do you agree with Mike? Has the pendulum swung so far the other way that it's now men's rights and not women's which are under threat? Or is he plain deluded? Have thousands of years of male hegemony actually secured a pretty decent deal for British men? After all, only a fifth of our MPs are female, only one in five board members of FTSE 100 companies are women, and top female executives earn half a million less than their male counterparts over a lifetime. So does Britain really need a party that fights for the rights of men? I'm joined now by Mike Buchanan himself, the founder of the New Political Party, and also Laura Bates, journalist, a feminist, and creator of the Everyday Sexism Project, which documents the harassment that women face in their daily life. So, Mike, first, just start with you and start with what the party's all about. Just lay out your stool for us. Yes, we, we, we think basically it's about time that uh, men and boys were represented. They're, they're, you know, men are half the electorate. Uh, and yet there, there are a huge number of areas in which women are advantaged, um, uh, uh, primarily by the actions and the inactions of the state. And I'm not aware of a single area where, where women are disadvantaged relative to men. Right, so the, the laugh you can hear is, Laura, we'll come to you in a second. But um, I mentioned some of them. So men paying something like 72% of all income tax. Would that mean that you think 72% of all policies should be male-focused? Or No, no, not, not at all. But I think that, you know, we, the thing we could at uh, least hope for is, is some sort of gender equality. Well, well, why do you think that's lacking? Or how do you see that it's lacking? Because I some think examples. I, because I th well, uh, for example, um, if we take domestic abuse and violence, around 40% of victims of domestic abuse and violence are men. Um, and, 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 and yet... Um, virtually the entirety of state provision for the victims of abuse um, goes towards women. So, for example, there are over 4,000 places uh, dedicated to female sufferers of abuse and 15, one five, uh, devoted to male sufferers of domestic abuse. Anything else, just before we bring in Laura? Just give some examples yes, from you? Uh, yes, I think also. I mean, in, 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 in the business world, the, the government is driving, uh, through, through, through the threat of legislated quotas, um, women onto FTSE 100 boards who are clearly not qualified. Um, and in fact, in, in, you know, studies in other countries sh show very clearly that when you artificially increase the number of women on corporate boards, corporate performance declines. There's not a single study that shows the result is, is corporate performance improvement. OK, Laura, what do you think of what you just heard? Well, I think it's very strange. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Mike says he wants to see men and boys represented. He says they make up half of the electorate. By my maths, that should mean that they make up half of MPs. And in fact, by that logic, the people who are vastly underrepresented are women, who, as you mentioned yourself, are four out of three cabinet members, fewer than a quarter of MPs, 15% of the board members of FTSE 100 companies, 13% of our most senior judges, 5% of newspaper editors. I mean, the statistics go on and on. So first of all, just to argue that men and boys are underrepresented is absolutely right, laughable. Right, so where, Mike, how do you answer that? Because those facts are incontrovertible. No, they are. But, but, the, but the reasons why men dominate, let's say, parliaments, for example, or, 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 or major corporate boards, um, the reasons are perfectly well understood. They have nothing to do with discrimination against women. The, 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 the prime reason was, was uh, outlined in 2000 by the world-renowned sociologist Catherine Hakim. It's her preference theory. And she, she, she basically explained, or her research found, that while four in seven British men are work-centred, only one in seven British women are. And that's a persistent finding. Oh, so they're finding. better at the job, basically. They, they, they basically work harder and they're more focused. <laughs> and and for, so, for example, whenever you hear a woman say she's looking for a better work-life balance in her life, is she, talking, is she saying she wants more work or more life? Laura? 
First of all, there's another recent study which considered 1.4 million subjects and found that by 1997 there was no difference between male and female college students on measure of stereotypically masculine traits such as assertiveness and leadership. It also concluded, completely contradictory to Catherine Hakem's research, that jobs are now more central to women's identities. But the very notion that men or women are inherently or biologically more or less likely to be work-centred is very problematic. What about the fact that we live in a highly gendered culture that pervasively suggests to girls and women from a very young age that it's their responsibility ability to make sacrifices for children. Are you reading all that out? No, I'm talking to you. Where's it coming you. from? This is coming from me. This is coming from the okay. 25,000 women who have uh, put their experiences on my website, the Everyday Sexism Project. This is coming from overwhelming statistics and studies, contrary to what Mike has just said, which clearly show that actually greater diversity at the top of Parliament and at the top of boards absolutely leads to greater and better performance. From the we still we do come back. I'm, I'm sorry, Laura, but that, that is just nonsense. There is not the a five single. The studies there is not that you've quoted, Mike, as you yourself have just acknowledged all talk about artificial measures being taken and you talk no, no, about no, they quotas don't. No, a lot they don't. but actually quotas are not a feminist issue and I think one of the big problems here is that you accuse the women's equality movement of being at fault for many of the issues you talk about now hang on a minute feminism means equality between men and women and I and many other feminists would stand up just like you for male victims of domestic violence for male suicides but hang on a minute this isn't about women saying that they want equality and men therefore suffering it's just a false logic or collating two things. Mike? Yes, uh, well first of all on the studies um, the, the, the longitudinal studies, of which there are five, covered Norway where, where quotas did drive women onto boards. I'm, but, wait, I'm, I'm now lost. I don't know what a longitudinal study sorry, is and a, I don't even know what you're talking about. Are, okay. you just, are you talking about men and women generally or in no, parliament no, sorry, or business I, no, or what? I'm talking about business. Um, it, so it, you're going to try and prove that men are better at working than women? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that there are more men who are, who, who are willing to put the effort in to, to succeed at the top of, 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 of most fields. But Mike, what that that is a very interesting statement, because that gets to the heart of it, Laura, doesn't it? That Mike believes that men are prepared to do the spade work in a way that women aren't. That's his fundamental belief. Well, in that case, I'd refer you to some of the Home Office statistics on the pay gap, where the Home Office itself... And the you're going to do statistics as well. This is like a, a snow fight well, here. Well, you know, if you're going to try and suggest that statistics back you up, then you've got to look at all the statistics available. But it's the vast majority of statistics support the idea that women are experiencing discrimination. To take a very small point, let's look at the fact that Mike is saying that men are more likely to put in the effort, and I believe sacrifices is one of the words he uses, yeah. to get to the cop at top in business and politics. Well, what about the fact that maternity leave and all of the way in which we structure provisions for parental leave make it vastly more likely that women will be the ones who end up caring for children. When you're talking about sacrifices, you have to take into account the fact that many of those men who have managed to achieve their goals of reaching the top of business and politics have women who have actually made career sacrifices to bring up their children and taken hits in their own careers to enable them to do that. We always have this narrative of women sacrificing and we hear about the burden of childcare. The reality is that, is, is that um, the, the majority of women in full-time work if they had the choice, would work either part time or not at all. But and financially, where does that they, come from? Oh, there have been plenty of studies over, over twenty years. Uh, what, you know, they, I don't, why don't we not use any more statistics? Okay. How about that? And we'll talk about what we actually believe. So, okay. Mike, carry on. Um, yes, sorry. We, we, no, we well, talking, you, the question, the, the point yes, that, that Laura has raised, yeah. which has been, in, I'm sure, a lot of listeners' minds for the moment, you raised the the issue about men being better at work, is that often it is the woman who ends up at home looking after the child. Yes, but, but, but you can, I mean, feminists always present that, if you like, as, as a burden, whereas, uh, whereas I mean, you know, and, and women have been brainwashed for 30 years or more to be, to, you know, they've, they've been told that, that, that you know, that, that the world of work is, is, is satisfying and so on, and childcare is a burden and onerous. And, and most, most women actually enjoy family life, and, and they're far more, again, if you go back to Catherine Hakim, um, most women, there are far more women who are family-centred than are work-centred. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't accept that. You're making gross generalisations. You're suggesting that women have been brainwashed into wanting to go into careers. Well, that certainly doesn't stand up when you look at the very, very few women who've reached the top of those careers. But you're also failing to take into account that our society suggests to women and girls from a very young age that they should be thinking and aspiring to different 
different kinds of careers and also to taking a far greater responsibility for the family life. For example, one woman wrote to tell us that her five-year-old daughter asked to be turned into a boy because she wanted to go into space. She didn't even know that she had the option. She was five years old and she'd already got that impression. Another parent wrote to say that when his three-year-old daughter picked up a stethoscope in a play session, another parent swooped in and said, oh, you're going to be a nurse, which would be wonderful if that was what she wanted to do. But from the age of three, it was being suggested to her that she should be focusing on those kinds of careers. So for you to suggest that this is some kind of biological imperative that women have is utterly to discount extremely strong cultural factors. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, talking anything about biology, <clears throat> but, but we should remind ourselves that it's 34 years since Margaret Thatcher came to power. I mean, dear God, I mean, do, do, does any young woman today not know that she can get to the top in any line of work if she's talented enough and hardworking enough? Are you really quoting one female leader that we've ever had and suggesting that that's evidence that well, she, any woman can think well, that she well, can she, get to the um, top? Well, uh, Come uh, on, Mike. Well, well she, Mike, no, she was prepared question. to put the work in, if, if, whereas Harriet Harman and her like are not. If, if uh, all that's holding back women in business is they're not working as hard as men, why do girls do so much better than boys in school? I think they're I think they're more conscientious, and the the education system, which is now highly feminised and, and ever more so. Can you explain uh, what you mean by that? Yes, I think I mean I mean in, in primary schools, you know, right from primary schools, um, uh, virtually all teachers are female. Um, um, a high percentage of secondary school teachers are female, and and boys from a from a young age are told to be ashamed of their natures. They're they're they're, they're expected to be more like girls, um, and and there's basically. Um, so, but the, the entire education system has been geared around the, the, the areas in which young women or girls and young women are stronger than boys. Well, what would you say about the fact that so few women are studying science, technology, uh, mathematics, that at more than half, sorry, one statistic, Jeremy, no, that's all right, you that at you more than very half good, of uh, co-ed state schools, there are absolutely no women studying physics. So, I mean, for you to cherry-pick well, one aspect of the education well, system and claim that it is disadvantages it, but, 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 but boys is before, absurd. Before, when before we go on to that, just pulling back from, from the details, do you find the whole notion of this a problem, Laura? You think he's barking up the wrong tree? Absolutely. I think it's incredibly offensive to suggest that women are inherently either less able, less suited, or have less drive I'm to go into that. top careers well, than but men he's, do. He's sort of slanting it the other way. He's just saying he wants policies to be geared more towards men and boys because they've been left out. Well, I don't think that's the case. I mean, often Mike mentions things like the Equalities Act, but actually that's not something about women. It's not about promoting women. It's about equal opportunities across a whole on, range on of country, factors, including on... disability and race. And actually, Mike, having a women's minister and having quotas, these aren't great treats that women are happy to have. I know that I and many other feminists would be extremely pleased if we didn't need them. Okay, the reason well, almost, we have them is because we yes. are so underrepresented, in fact. Mike Buchanan. Yes, um, almost two-thirds of public sector employees are women. And yet the Equalities Act allows uh, public sector organisations to favour women in their recruitment and promotion And those uh, public processes. sector jobs are the ones that are going to be worst hit by the budget cuts, meaning that women will disproportionately pay for them. Women are also two-thirds of the workers who earn but, less than £7. But your point is that, that men are employed in the private sector and their taxes are funding that's, the that's public right. sector, is that's that right? right? Around, around two-thirds two of private sector workers are men. And, and men pay about 72% of all the income tax taken in the country. So what, what's the future for the party here, Mike? What are you gonna, how are you going to try and break through? Um, we're, we're, we're planning to uh, contest the top 30 Conservative marginals, um, which, which, have, which, have, which have majorities at the last election between about 50 and about 1,600. And, and, and um, our, our intention is to pick up a few thousand votes, at, at the very least, and, and ideally even win, win some of those seats in 2015. Um, and start to get um, start to get uh, the you know um, all the parties to to, to recognise that legislation uh, you know is anti male and that the state basically assaults the the half of the population which largely finances the state. Laura, Laura, there are regular stories where we hear and it's the fathers for justice thing, isn't it? It's the the, the 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 bloke who's lost his house and his wife and all. That's how he sees it, and he can't see his children, either, and he feels the law is just stacked against him. Do you have sympathy in those cases? Of course, I think if there are cases where people are being unfairly treated by the system, whether they're men or women, that that's really important to fight for. What I think is really false logic is to suggest that those cases are the fault of people campaigning for women's equality.
Thank you both very much indeed, and, and thanks for sparing us from all the statistics I know you could have deployed in this discussion. Mike Buchanan is the founder of the new political party Justice for Men and Boys. Laura Bates is a journalist, feminist, and creator of the Everyday Sexism Project, which documents the harassment that women face in their daily life. Wow, that was a discussion, and it went on, and so we've... Because it was so interesting, we haven't got much time for comments, and there's a lot of people now calling to w- wanted to talk about what they just heard, which was essentially Mike Buchanan, who's founded a new political party, which is called Justice for Men and Boys. Charlie Newcastle has texted, it sounds like this man has a royal chip on his shoulder about something. I'd love to know what. This man is in the wrong century. He has made a gross amount of assumptions. Ian MacDonald in Cambridge, you felt a bit more sympathy with him, did you? Yes, I, I agree with a lot of what he's saying. And if you go through the systems, uh, you actually appreciate what he's coming from. Like, um, very quickly, I'll, if you go to court, see a child, eight out of ten fathers want to see their child, but you've got practically no chance. If you go to contact centres, if you pay money, it does make a difference. But a woman, if a guy's got custody, a woman does not have to pay a penny, doesn't have to see the child, I can walk into her life at 16 and take the child away. Ian, thank you very much. Any we, we went into that area, Ian, and, and thank you for your call, and we were trying to find other areas where men are disadvantaged in the same way. Ken emails from Preston and says, at last somebody is sticking up for us lads. For too long now, I've seen women get jobs and get promotions just because they are female, rather than the best person for the job. And when they want to go off and have children, us lads have to work twice as hard, he says. Annie Shelburne in Burnley, you're sitting there laughing at this, I gather. I just think it's a bit unbelievable. I think that that bloke's living on a different planet to everybody else, actually. I mean, you know, just men run this country and men run the world, you know, most, most the majority of... Uh, of MPs are men, the majority of top judges are men, the majority of CEOs, I mean, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, if, if men are not allowed to see their children, there is usually a good reason, like domestic violence. You know, usually men are not, you know, usually men get access to their children unless but what, they're good but leave, leave aside, not to. Leave aside visiting children, because that's a specific area. Yeah. It, his, his point is really about, the, the big point is that men pay 72% of income tax and they don't get an bang for their buck in society generally all over well maybe that's because uh, uh, men still earn a lot more money than women do and women a lot of women are still doing the lowest paid jobs particularly in in the public sector you know it's saying that two-thirds of women of women public sector workers are women but most of them are very low paid so that's probably why men pay a lot more tax because they earn a lot more money thanks annie Alison emails from chesterfield and says this man is uh, a caveman in a smart suit who actually thinks he's standing up for men and boys, when really he's quoting pointless statistics about nothing. He's made my blood boil. Paulie in Brighton texts, What a convincing and coherent woman speaker. She's wiping the floor with him. I think I'll continue to be a heterosexual male feminist. (laughs) On Facebook, Amanda Wills says, Ha ha, apparently I've been brainwashed into wanting a career. What is Mike talking about? Anna in Sheffield text, Mike must not forget the one reason men make up 72% of those paying income tax is because women are at home, unpaid, looking after the children. On Facebook, Mike Mahoney is a bit more supportive. He said, it's not just men's rights that are being eroded by women's libbers. Women's influence in society has led to the airy fairy policies and too much compassion for people who don't deserve it. Dave Simpson in Cardiff says, I completely agree with Mike Buchanan. He's bang on the money. I'm an NHS nurse. There's absolutely no mandate for men's health. There are no men's health clinics. There's far less available help for men suffering from depression. So he agrees. Just a couple more comments for you before we go to the news. Linda in Canterbury has texted and says, I'm a housewife. I'm actually with Mike on this, not Laura. No one forces women to have children and stay at home. Women need to let men have equality too. Too many women want too much from the government and employers.